Here we have, have the uh, chassis out of that late 30s, early 40s True Tone radio phonograph that I showed you in a previous video. This is the battery operated model that contains a wind up phonograph motor. And we're connected to the battery eliminator, and this is about all we get. Faint reception and a lot of squealing. Okay, checking our B plus voltage, we should have 90 volts coming in. We only have 65 volts. Surely there's nothing wrong with this battery eliminator. I've used it on other sets, and I've also restored it. What I'm more inclined to think is going on, since this battery eliminator is essentially an unregulated power supply, and it relies on the load of the radio to get the proper voltage, I'm more inclined to think we have things in this radio that are drawing too much current and loading down the power supply. And the first thing on my suspect list is this electrolytic capacitor right here that connects from B plus to ground. It's more or less a bypass capacitor and I believe its intended purpose is to I believe its purpose is to filter RF off of the B plus line to prevent all sorts of squealing and oscillations like we're getting right now. Okay, I believe this electrolytic capacitor is bad. That's the results with the capacitor in circuit. And there we are out of circuit. You can hear this little bit of squealing. Obviously, that's not all that's wrong with the radio, but that's a good start. Okay, we're now tuned to 1290. You can hear the results better on that station without the pan with the capacitor. So yeah, obviously that one's bad, so let's go ahead and replace that. And here's the old capacitor. As you can see, for all intents and purposes, it's open. It's supposed to be a 10 microfarad, 150 volt. Okay, that took care of the squealing, but we still have very distorted sound and low B plus voltage. Now let's check our voltages in the audio circuit. First, I want to check the grid voltage on the audio output tube. And by the way, this uses two output tubes in parallel, not push-pull. They're just wired in parallel. Now I'm checking the grid on the output tubes. We have a positive 1.5 volts, which is totally wrong. We should have a negative voltage, preferably, or at best, zero volts, but not a positive voltage. So most likely this coupling capacitor is leaky. Now checking the B-plus voltage on the plate of the driver tube, we have 42 volts. It's, it's kind of iffy. It probably should be a little higher than that. Let's go ahead and replace this coupling capacitor. Okay, I replaced that capacitor and the volume cleared up. And got much louder. Closed in order to have you run it for him. But then the other thing is that's a bit Let's of a check our voltage now on the grid of the output of tube. Of the held thing is not very valuable to anybody else. Yeah. If they can't control okay. it, you can always run them out. Negative yeah. 4.8 volts. Beautiful. So if somebody sued your brother and wanted that 49%. Let's see if see our B plus voltage jumped up any. Oh, I see. Very good point. Yeah. So I like the idea of making it 49 and like making you a man. Yeah, 90 volts. 
separate LLC. 90 volts, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Like what was it, about 65 earlier? Life in my okay, here's the offending <laughs> capacitor. We were, was going to analyze it, but since the lead broke off right up at the body of the part, I can't very well do that, but we know it's leaky. Now, what was happening was this capacitor was extremely leaky, allowing a positive voltage to be applied to the grid of the output tube, and as a result, the output tube was conducting very hard, shall we say, which was loading down the power supply. Actually, it was placing a pretty big load on the power supply. So that just goes to show this little capacitor can cause all kind of grief. Now, if this had, a, had this been in an AC powered radio with a power transformer, you know, you show them how this capacitor malfunctioning yeah, could have placed enough load on the circuit That's to possibly right. overload and the power uh, supply, which could cause the transformer to overheat, and that could have it's possibly damaged the power transformer. Legacy. Possibly not, but possibly and so. Here's our tone capacitor, and here's its schematic location. One end connects to the plate of the output tube, the other end connects to the tone control switch and when the switch is turned on it just shunts the uh, connects the capacitor to ground which kills the high frequency now right now this capacitor is out of circuit so there's no detriment to any kind of damage here here's the plate side we have 86 volts on it and here's the other side of the capacitor which now is not connected to anything. We have about 18, 17 volts on it. So that capacitor is very leaky and passing DC voltage. I'd give anything to just laugh with them one more time. It's Friday morning in Malaysia, another day of searching for signs of the missing There it is, switched into circuit. Is in Kuala Lumpur. The search is resuming whether conditions have improved. Let's check our B plus voltage with it out of circuit and then in circuit. They will all be focusing 90 volts B plus with the leaky capacitor out of circuit. But in the continually shifting waters of the southern Indian Ocean, it now let's check the voltage with the capacitor in circuit. In Montana today, 23-year-old Jordan Graham. Well, it actually didn't drop any, which surprises me. But we know it's obviously leaky, or there wouldn't be DC on the other side of it. So let's go ahead and replace it. Here's the capacitor replaced. Let's check the voltage on the other side of it. Zero. What it's supposed to be. But I mean, you can drop into the ER. Or you could drop into home I'll health. I'll tell you what, you let's go ahead and replace this other capacitor. This is another uh, plate bypass. One side connects to the plate, the other side connects to ground. Does it's quote a good job, and if it leaks too bad, it's to be something you Okay, we have this capacitor replaced. This capacitor here is just uh, in the signal circuit of the volume control. There's no real voltage on it, so no immediate danger here. Here's another bypass cap. Have about 50 volts on that cap. The other side going to ground. The other side of that cap going to ground. So that's another potential danger spot. Okay, I have the ground end of that capacitor disconnected. As you can see, it's passing DC voltage. Actually, I have the set unplugged. It's just... Uh, we're just still draining down the charge on the filter capacitor, so that's the reason the voltage is dropping. But nonetheless, that proves that this capacitor is leaky and passing DC voltage. So let's replace it. And here we are tuned to WWL 870. Well, that's a lot better than we started with, but we still have a ways to go. 
now we'll analyze these capacitors. Now checking the 0.002 microfarad cap for leakage and at 50 volts you can see it's leaking pretty bad according to the flashing neon light and the more voltage is applied the worse it leaks. Okay we're now going to check the audio coupling cap that was so bad the one that the lead broke off flush with the capacitor body so bear with me here I'm going to have to put the camera down and it's going to take both hands for me to hold the test lead in contact with the little remaining stub of a lead coming out of this capacitor and when you see the light glowing or flashing you'll know it's leaky right now we're set to 50 volts okay let's try this just bear with me a second yeah you can see the light flashing violently at 50 volts Two hundred volts, it glows. So yeah, that capacitor is very bad. And this point oh five, it also lost one of its leads. I, it's broken off so far up in there. I really can't even make a connection with that one. But we know it's bad. Here's a point oh one. It's leaking fairly bad at two hundred volts. I realize there's not going to be that much voltage applied to the capacitor and the radio seeing as how the B plus voltage is only 90 volts but you can see at 50 volts it's flashing a little bit and now we're testing the 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor that was shown to be open on the modern capacitor meter and it's showing open on this one too It's also testing very leaky, even at 50 volts. Well, it's actually not open, I don't suppose. It's actually acting more like a resistor than it is a capacitor. Whoops, scratch that last statement. I forgot to set the tester to electrolytic instead of paper capacitor. So, as you can see, it's not leaking at all. It's just dried out and wide open. Okay, I just went ahead and replaced the other two capacitors that I said really weren't that critical because there's not much voltage on them, but I was replacing the rest of them, so might as well replace these two as well. Now we'll analyze those two. Here's the volume control coupling cap, and it's actually still in pretty good shape, actually. I had a friend that was in the business back in the 40s and 50s and he swore by these solar capacitors, these solar seal tight caps. And I guess my experience with them has shown that out of all of the paper capacitors from that area, they're probably the best. But as you saw a few minutes ago, they still fail. And now the .05 microfarad cap in the oscillator circuit also seems to be holding up good. I guess the reason these two held up better, better than the rest of them is, is because they never had any real voltage applied across them. The other capacitors having high voltage applied across them with the forces of Mother Nature hitting them, I guess took their toll on them. Okay, that concludes part one of this video. In part two, we'll clean up the chassis, perform an RF and IF alignment. We'll also replace this neon indicator here. Most battery radios have a mechanical device to show you that it's turned on. These use a neon indicator. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.